Hello everyone and welcome back to our artificial intelligence lecture series. I am Nadia Patel. Let's get started with our today's lecture. So we are in continuation to unit 2 which is introduction to intelligent system. We have already talked a lot and understood a lot about what intelligence and its components are all about. Now let us head towards our next point which is an important point with the point of view of artificial intelligence and that is agent and environment. So under agent and environment we will understand its definition. We will try to know and understand what is the structure of agent and finally some terms and terminologies used in the concept of agent and environment. So let us get started with our today's lecture. We have already seen in intelligent systems and in intelligence components that perception was one component, one important factor of intelligence and under this perception we had our sensory organs like eyes, ears, nose, taste and touch. So in humans, these are the sensory organs which helps you to sense certain things and objects and actually figure out what exactly the object is all about. So this is the technology which we are learning about. So we are actually trying to convert this ability of humans and give it to machines. So this is what we understood, what we learned. In terms of agent and environment, I could say that this is just a take, taking it further. We are just taking further this perception point and actually making it or converting it to agent and environment. So remember first thing while uh, studying or learning agents and environment, these organs are going to help you a lot. So we sense through these are sensory organs so look uh, take a look at this picture where a little boy is actually trying to have his first experience with flowers so he's trying to touch them he's trying to smell them he's trying to feel them he's trying to see what exactly the flowers are all about so while learning in his growth years he's quite young and with the course of time he will save this data Say for example, this is a backyard garden from his farmhouse or something. So the farmhouse is having certain kind of climate. It is having certain kind of soil. And these are some rare flowers which are grown in his farmhouse somewhere. So with his growth years and slowly gradually growing, he will actually try to maintain this data as such flowers will grow in certain region and will have such kind of texture and can have such kind of smell. So this is his, you can say memory or this is his past data. Similarly, while growing, he will also grow his knowledge. So in this environment, if we actually try to term it in terms of agent and environment, this is the environment. Whatever you can see, which are the flowers, the plants, the leaves, these are the environment in which the child is actually learning and this child is the agent. Okay, this child is actually having his sensory organs like eyes, ears, he is actually having his feel that is touch, he is making use of his nose to smell the color. This is the agent and this is the environment. Now as you can see in garden, only plants and flowers are not the single thing which you will get. There can be insects, there can be butterflies, there can be flies, there can be some cat, dog, some pet animals just wandering around. So if we term this child as an agent, he is making use of his sensory organs to sense, to feel the nature and the flowers. But while sensing and feeling this nature, he will not just sense and just leave it. He will keep these experiences in terms of memory in his mind. 
so this will be a memory of him visiting his farmhouse where he actually saw beautiful colorful flowers some flies some butterflies there was a certain smell coming out from the flowers so these are some experiences which he is going to store in the form of a memory now this is what exactly is getting converted into technology we will actually know how these things like the feeling we get the touch the smell the experience we get the aroma which we feel and the memory which we recall when we see similar kind of flowers so in future after growing up after having uh, maybe after 10 or 15 years when he'll be a grown up young boy and if he sees the same color flowers he'll actually recall the memory of him visiting his farmhouse when he was a child so this is how we make use of our memory and past experiences so speaking in terms of the technology and in technical terms artificial intelligence agent and environment is actually something a some some kind of component which is found to be very important in making artificial intelligence work so this agents actually act in their environment if this is the child this is the agent and this is the environment the agent is actually working in the environment so similarly the environment can contain some other agents as well as i told you the garden will not only have plant and flower and the child the garden will also have some butterflies some flies some small birds some animals some domestic animals so environment will contain many things and the agent the child is actually about to experience what flowers are all about but at the same time he will look around and see okay these are the certain types of butterflies which are seen near such type of flowers so these are the certain type of flies or these are the bees which we, you can see near the flowers so he is actually learning the environment the main component was flower some certain kind of flower taking its smell feeling its texture and looking at its colors and petals but with the course of time and with the learning he will actually sense what environment is all about as i told you there can be a certain type of climate there can be a certain type of soil so the agent the child is actually sensing every single thing so the definition says that an agent in our example the child is anything that can perceive perceiving means learning or conceiving or understanding its environment through sensors and act upon that environment through effectors now we will understand what sensors are what effectors are but we will first let us go with the flow so the agents sense their environment with the help of the sensory organs the actuators and effectors we will know shortly what actuators and effectors are also all about an ai agent can also have mental properties such as knowledge belief intention etc now in our case the intention was actually looking at the flower and feeling that flower and studying that flower but with the same intention he just looked around the environment and he saw certain butterflies some honey bees over there some cats or some domestic animals which are seen in such type of gardens so this is how he is learning now he is believing that he is having a belief that these kind of flowers will have such kind of butterflies but is this the case he will understand with the course of time with the course of growth years gradually slowly when he will grow he will actually find out that is this the case that such flowers will only have such butterflies or you can see butterflies everywhere so this is how it works further agent runs in the cycle of perceiving thinking and act so you can see this is a loop this is some kind of loop in which an agent actually works he keeps on perceiving that is he keeps on understanding he keeps on thinking that means he is going to process now he has understood that a pink flower is going to have certain kind of smell and aroma this pink flower will have certain kind of butterflies near it 
and these flowers will grow in certain kind of climate now he is thinking that means he is processing this these fact and this knowledge and further he'll be acting if he is supposed to take a action maybe his mom has asked him to pick up some pink flowers to just decorate a vase from his living room so if this is the action to be performed he'll pluck those flowers or if he is just there to take an experience of garden he will just smell sense them water the plants and come back so this is how it works and this is a loop we keep on perceiving we keep on thinking and we keep on acting on the basis of our thinking so now agent can be of two to three types if it is a human agent he will have his sensory organs like eyes ears and other organs he will have his hand legs vocal tract which are effectors and which work for actuators if it is a robotic agent this agent will have cameras infrared range finders as its sensors and motors as its actuators or effectors further if it is a software agent now agent need not to be every time a robot or a device it can also be a software for which you will feed a data he will actually perceive the data it will process it and it will present an output based on the data provided so if it is a software agent it can have some keystrokes from your keyboard it will have some file contents as sensory input and act on those input and display an output on the screen so what exactly is the structure of artificial intelligence agent and environment so this is a very popular diagram and this is how they have presented or actually you can say worked with so environment is something which is going to be perceived which is going to be learned by the agent agent is going to have its sensory organs agent is also going to have some effectors it will also have some actuators with which will help effectors to work effectors are going to perform certain actions on the environment so this is how it works perceive the environment with the help of sensors make use of actuators so that effectors can take action on the environment so as you can see the diagram that agent can be a part of the environment so agent is going to work in the environment now let us see the terms and terminologies which we are talking with from the last couple of minutes perception perception is or we have already seen this component in intelligence but making it short it is what agent is going to see in the environment perception history as i told you the child is experiencing garden and flowers for the same time or you can say for the first time so he will keep these memories in his mind somewhere and store them that this was the color of flower this was the smell there were some butterflies or this was the environment where these flowers have grown so this is actually known as perception history which comes in a specific period so in future if he uh, with time it is a time to visit some another garden from his city he will recall the memory of the small garden the natural garden from his you can say farmhouse next is the actuators so many a times while learning agent and environment this is a part where confusion hits you up so actuators and effectors are the two parts which actually uh, you can find it a little confusing some say that it is one and the same thing but speaking in definitive term actually actuators are something which helps effectors to work so it is a mechanism that puts something into action which helps in movement actuators are only responsible for moving or controlling a system on the other hand effectors are agents organs like we have our sensory organs like 
hands and legs which become active and help in performing action effectors are the devices which affect the environment which are actually going to cause an action so as i told you the child as a agent is sensing a flower so if he is asked to pl pluck some flowers and come back home he will pluck them otherwise he'll water the plants and come back so what action he is supposed to perform depends on the agent these effectors actually perform the action actuators help the effectors to perform a certain action so this is how it works effector can be leg wheel arm finger wing fin and also a display screen when it comes to software actuator is the actual mechanism that helps the effector to execute or perform a certain action now let us see that what exactly this environment is in agent and environment an environment is everything in the world which surrounds the agent but it is not a part of an agent itself environment can be described as a situation in which an agent is present the environment is where agent lives operates and provides the agent with something to sense and act upon it now let us see what are different features of environment so as per russell and norvik so these are the two famous writers of uh, artificial intelligence even i am referring to their reference book which is artificial intelligence book and it is uh, quite good and but at the same time is having a little difficult language to understand so even if you want to go into the neat details about these small things which artificial intelligence is all about you can refer to russell and norvik's artificial intelligence book which i'll tell you in the last part of our today's lecture so uh, environment can actually have certain features so one feature is that it can be fully observable or partially observable secondly it can be static or dynamic as i told you there can be a certain climate only in that season the flowers may bloom so maybe the child is visiting his farmhouse in the spring season and he falls to visit the same farmhouse in the winter now the second time when he visits the farmhouse he will actually recall the memory of his backyard garden he'll visit and he'll find no flowers so this is how where confusion will stand out and he'll be confused at last time when i visited there was a beautiful garden and in this season there is not a single flower to play with so this is how he will learn that yes so in the spring season i will have a garden to play but in the winters i will not have the same garden to play with so this is static versus dynamic discrete versus continuous deterministic versus stochastic single agent versus multi agent as i told you there is only one child but there can be a situation where the child is accompanying two or three of his friends and all of them are together learning growing up and everybody is having his own perception so some will have a different mind the other will have a different mind everyone will have their own conclusion so this is again one example it can be episodic or sequential it can be known versus unknown so known could be the things which you are seeing unknown can be beneath the garden or under the ground so what fertilizers you are putting and what effect is these fertilizers giving so this is just we are relating it to a real life example but technically speaking this terms gets changed with the course of example accessible versus inaccessible so these were the features of environment and finally the book is a modern approach by stuart russell and peter norvik so if you want to go into the more details i think knowing this much about agent and environment is more than enough we have already seen its features we have seen the difference between actuator and effector 
we have seen how sensory organ in human is different from robots is different from a software so i think this is in totality more than enough if you are keen and interested in knowing more read this book so that that's it this is all about today's lecture in the next lecture we will speak more about what it, exactly rational agents are how it is represented and some of the more features of agent thank you i hope it was easy to understand